Betway is one of the most trusted voices in sports betting in both Canada and around the world. And Betway is the sports betting app that puts you, you, and you, and you, the customer, at the forefront. It's simple, it's fun, and it's a safe way to play, always with Betway. With the largest selection of betting options in sports, as well as strong promotions and fair odds, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? What are you waiting for? Head over to Betway and bet your way. You gotta be 19 years or older to play, and please, play responsibly. So here's the thing. Uh, the most important part, your your whatever team your trade made, it it sucks and it pales in comparison to what's going on between Vegas and Anaheim. Currently still open. We still don't have an answer on whether this trade is going to be allowed. But the background is that the Vegas Golden Knights wanted Ryan Kessler's contract because they want to be able to put Kessler's LTIR. Um, uh, or I'm assuming, like I'm assuming that they're not going to you know, wake Kess up from Kess's house. <laughs> Bring him over. The like, Kess, come out of your house and play I, for us. I don't think he's playing anymore. Yeah, LTIR. Um, and they wanted that so they can go over the cap. Mm-hmm. Now, a comparable deal to that is Evgeny Dodonov, who first signed his contract in Ottawa, then was moved to Vegas, I believe in the offseason, mm-hmm. and then Vegas was moving him to um, Anaheim. Mm-hmm. Now, it's an interesting move because I, I got to say, Pat Verbeek had a really impressive deadline yet, uh, overall, I think. Did a good job. Um, and Dodonov's one of those guys that, you know, on a, on a not as good team like the Ducks are, he's, he's going to be probably a first line winger or second line winger, and he could score 25 goals. He can score. Yeah. yeah he's an incomplete player, but uh, he can he can put 25 in the net, right? Yeah. Which is well, great. Yeah. And he's a $5 million player. So they try to make this move. And what comes out is that Dodonov has a no trade clause. That includes the Anaheim Ducks. It's a 10-team no-trader, and Anaheim is included. It's a shame for Pad Verbeek for having a pretty good deadline and also being the only seemingly innocent party here. Yes. <laughs> so here's, here's what we know. We know that Vegas tried to trade him. We know that Vegas was unaware that he had a no-trade clause. We know that there is a rumor floating around, an accusation that the Ottawa Senators, when they moved to Donoff to Vegas, did not include that piece of information. But that is on uh, Vegas to check. That's I, there. Now, let me say this. I a thousand, What Jesse just said is exactly, exactly right. And they would have had to have the paperwork. Because when you send a player, you have to send the contract. Mm-hmm. To, and here's the other thing. The no trade clause was on Puckpedia. Mm-hmm. It was on Cap Friendly. Mm-hmm. Public domain. Mm-hmm. Jesse, why is it Vegas's fault? Because when they acquired the Donov in the Ottawa trade, it's on them to make sure that they have all of the information about the player that they are acquiring. No, wait, though. By uh, so Donov had the modified no trade clause, mm-hmm. ten but, team, yeah. but Ottawa traded him, therefore waiving his no trade clause. That is, is a rule. the old rule. That it's, is a rule that was changed in the last CBA. That's right. That yeah, because they gave more power to the players, and once you're traded, you keep your no trade clause going forward. So his his ten team would have still been intact, and Vegas should have had that information when they're filing with the league about their new player, and they should have kept that on their records. And the NHL should have that record as well in their system because they have to register that for each individual player in the entire NHL. And if they don't have this information, this is a uh, this is a crazy moment in the NHL that I don't think we're going to see again in the next like decade. I hope not. This and, is wild. This is sloppy as right, hell. and it's 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 particularly bad because Evgeny Dodonov. Like this wasn't an impulsive move. That's a complicated trade uh, that they probably spent a long time on. His name has been in trade rumors for a long time because you look at Vegas's cap situation and he does not fit mm-hmm. at all. They've had a long time to prepare for this. And for what? For what? All the money they paid for that team. They don't have a, a lawyer? They don't have anyone who can just look over the deal? Now this, here's... Sorry, go ahead. I was going to say, the circumstances of how it broke down to is, is just even more fascinating because it happened at the deadline because it was a 3 p.m. trade. So oh. if the trade doesn't go through, there's no time for them to fix this situation. Like if this was a Saturday trade, if this was a Friday trade, it, it fails at league office. You have, a, you have like 24 hours to fix it. Go mm-hmm. throw on a different player. But because it happened at the deadline, Vegas is fucked. Well, and, and this is <laughs> it, right? Because 
the rumor right now, as of the recording of the show, and again, we don't have any confirmation, is that this trade will be voided. Because sure. they oh. never requested, it's, even if Dodonov does want to move, they never requested that he waive it, and it's too late. The deadline's over. And it's crazy in the, in the era where it's a phone call and you don't have to fax in a trade that we're still dealing with this. But here's the problem, is it puts Vegas over the cap. Mm-hmm. And it puts them over the cap, so it could, I, from, if I'm reading Which, this right, okay. I, what, I, what I can't understand is it, their, their projected cap space is $0, according to Cap Friendly. But um, they could be millions of dollars over the cap by the end of the season. And that will eat into the salary for next season. Because if you do go over during the regular season, it comes off next year. No, we have seen that before. Teams go totally. one or two million. And over. we've sort of wondered why more teams don't do it. If you want to really go balls to the wall, right? Well, yeah. like especially, you know, you know who should have, I think, maybe considered it is a team like Minnesota. Yeah, because yeah, they're yeah. gonna get eaten alive anyway. I mean, we're about to be in a world of hurt. So tell well, you what, I think our cap is one hundred million dollars this year, or even Boston, or any. Well, Boston, I believe, has gone into overage before. Um, trying to think of other have. teams. Your projected Toronto may cap have, space, but it wasn't by much. By but. the way, that is the cap space you'll have at the last day of the regular season. So if they're at zero, that's good. Projected cap space is zero dollars yeah. on the dot. However, I don't know if that includes the Don off or not. Right. It's and it cap. doesn't currently. Okay. Wait, is Kessler on the cap friendly Kessler, page? Yeah. Kessler's on the cap friendly page. So cap friendly, the way they have the contract right now is if the trade went through. Oh, they okay. haven't reversed it yet. So this is another thing. Like, who are the other guys involved in the deal? And there's John Moore mm -hmm. and there's someone else. Like, are all of these guys in limbo too? It, oh, yeah. 100%. No, it's only uh, John Moore, Kessler, and Dodonov. Yeah. The other uh, piece is a second round pick that's conditional. So there's only those three guys, and one isn't playing, and one is an AHL. Right. There's Dodonov, who's like, well, okay, I'm not fucking going. There's Kessler, like, well, I'm not playing anymore. And then there's John Moore, who, for all we know, could be in Anaheim right now, because he's like, oh, all right, I was traded. And so he left. Mm -hmm. And also, he was traded. That's the second time John Moore was traded in the last, like, three days as well. He was involved in another deal. I can't remember with who. But he was definitely traded, like, within the past week. Jesse's on it. He's on it right now. I just... He's so on it. I just think... Boston. Boston. I thought of... March 19th. S Steve, so, you yeah. said something about the Vegas Golden Knights that I have to take Umbridge with. Professor Umbridge with. Oh. And that is that this was uh, not, a, not a move that was done without significant thought. <laughs> and I have to tell you... <laughs> if that were the case, we wouldn't be talking about it. Right. It would have just been a, a B or C trade on the list of many trades. And the reality is, the Vegas Golden Knights, perhaps more than you think, have flown by the seat of their pants for the better part of two years. And they, I think they did a really good job with the expansion draft. I don't think anybody can deny that. Stanley Cup finals. I mean, my God. Right. But, let you know, let's talk about signing Nate Schmidt and then basically booting him out the door when somebody better comes along. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about, I mean, not that it's not that it's wrong, but it's how they did it. How, how about trading uh, the Vesna winner than needing a goalie? Well, and, and maybe you can't, maybe like if you look at Vegas's injuries, like it's, it's bad, right? Like you can't plan for that, but that's one goalie. There's only one goalie on injured reserve. Brassois and Logan Thompson, one of those guys, and it would have been Brassois, would have been the backup. Yeah, but and, and we acknowledge that at least part of Vegas's LTIR situation is their own doing. I agree with that, and I. It's not. Oh, what did, did they ask guys to get hurt? There are guys who elected for surgery that, in most other situations, they probably would have waited until the off season. Who is that? Well, Mark Stone in particular. I think they probably would have waited. Mm -hmm. There are lots of players who could go and have surgery right now, right this very minute. They're dying for the offseason. Can't wait to go have the surgery and recover and finally not be in pain anymore. But I also kind of want to win the Stanley Cup. Right. And I think this is a very good roster with everybody healthy. But you've got Pacioretty, Leonard, Smith, McNabb, Stone, Martinez, all on either injured reserve or long-term injury reserve. And beyond that, you know, you talk about the Marc-Andre Fleury situation, and people are going to look at me and go, you do a show with Walsh, we get it. But remember that uh, 
Mark Andre Fleury was traded for essentially nothing, and he had just won the Vesna, and they didn't tell him. He found out on Twitter. They leaked it to an insider mm-hmm. who who then tweeted it, which is what an insider should do. I don't blame the insider. I think no. it's the right thing to do. No. Because it's an insider, you go, you probably go, can I tweet this? And they go, yes, and then you tweet it. But they didn't call him. That's public record. And I, I got to say, something that Brian Burke said on Sportsnet, it was either last trade deadline or last playoffs or something. Brian Burke fucking nailed this. Okay? okay. And I agreed with mo- I disagree with most of what Brian Burke said, even though I fucking love the guy. But he, he nailed this. And he said, Vegas is developing a reputation with players, agents, and other organizations as flippant. Mm-hmm. And the flippancy is, and just let me explain this for one sure. second. The flippancy is not cutthroat. Because a lot of people, whenever I bring this up, people are like, oh, they're just being cutthroat. Wouldn't you want your team to be like that? I agree. Cutthroat is how you have to be in professional sports. But you can be professionally cutthroat or you can be sloppy cutthroat. Professional cutthroat is, fuck, this sucks. I really hate the organization for moving on for me. But I get it. I get it. They had to move on because they made their choice. They got to move on. And I can respect them for that. Sloppy is the first guy you picked in the expansion draft, face of the franchise. Uh, guy that brought you all the way to the Stanley Cup Finals. Um, we're going to trade you and then not tell you. That's sloppy. Um, hey, we're going we're gonna to acquire a guy from the Ottawa Senators who clearly, who also don't have their shit together. We'll talk about Travis Hamannick in a little bit. Oh here. my God. The, the story there is bananas. What? Yeah. But, the, but the, the Ottawa Senators, you don't double check that this guy doesn't have a no trade clause. Didn't you hire the guy who created the original Cap Friendly in Puckpedia? A general fan. General, Tom. Tom, we have the show. Tom, can you check Cap Friendly, the site that copied you? No offense, Cap Friendly. I, I love you guys. It was like Tom was just the first one on it, wasn't he? Yeah. Or maybe they were at the same time. I wasn't trying to be mean. Uh, no, I don't they know. were. They were same time. Were they same time? Okay, then my bad, Cap Friendly. I love them. I love Cap Friendly. <laughs> but the the site that was almost identical. Yeah. You're, it you're was thinking, there. I think you might be thinking Cap Geek. Was Cap Geek? Which was the OG. <gasps> that was the OG. That's what I thought. The OG. It's my bad. And it was a brilliant idea. Mm-hmm. And and I I just this is. Exactly what Brian Burke was talking about. It's cutthroat, but it's sloppy, and you can't respect it. And I'm going to suggest something. Uh, Vegas, if they get healthy, uh, cup contender. It's really hard to fire GMs in this league. They usually get a lot of rope. Kelly McCrimmon hasn't been there for a very long time. If this trade doesn't go through and they miss the playoffs, he should be fired. So, And, dude, Dale Talon was fired from the Chicago Blackhawks for a very similar clerical error. Was he? Yes. Um, it was the Cam Barker contract. Remember that? Can you explain it again? Like, I, oh, I remember boy. there being a Cam Barker issue, but like, it was a very, a pers- like, don't have to go into full detail. Yeah, it was, it was a very long time ago. And basically, uh, some sort of paperwork was not filed in time. And I believe the Blackhawks were penalized somehow. Woof. Yikes. And then he was fired and Stan Bowman came in and there's lots of rumors uh, surrounding all that. Oh, there was some political maneuvering. There, yeah. To be sure. Um, you know, who's, while Dale Talon was at the helm, whose fault actually was it? Um, but yeah, that, that cost him his job. Vegas currently, according to Puck, I'm um, sorry, moneypuck.com. You can find this yourself, moneypuck.com slash predictions. Super easy URL to remember. Vegas. <laughs> it's so bizarre because I'm not sure who would take the spot from them. Um, but Vegas's chances of making the Stanley Cup playoffs at this point are 42. Oh my God, it's below zero. Oh, sorry, or, sorry, sorry, below 50 now. Sorry, 43%. Yeah. Oh boy. That, that changed in a hurry, didn't it? It did. They've had, I mean, listen, they've had a ton of injuries. I get it. But you, can, if can Jack Eichel have a GM, if you're in free, I know. <laughs> holy, holy shit. If you're in free fall, <laughs> I think we can agree this isn't his fault. Uh, well, Sabres fans might disagree. Well, fair um, fair but fair. I, I I mean, if you're in free fall, doesn't it behoove you? Like Dallas has a better shot. Vegas is currently ahead of Dallas right now, but they've got five games. Dallas has five games in hand. Dallas's chances are making it are somewhere in the neighborhood of like 63, 64%. Vegas. I mean, the best, the best thing Vegas has going for them is most of the teams behind them sold. Yeah. Not all of them. They're in deep shit. They're in deep shit. They'll be back next year if everybody's healthy. But this year, you, if your team is in free fall, does it not behoove you to be extremely careful at the trade deadline? You'd think so. 
You'd think so. Dude, this is... I don't... Does this happen in other sports? Yes. Where every couple of years, there's an incident where the league has to go, by the way, everyone, here are the rules. <laughs> Remember that happened to Jim Benning with um, oh, the Russian defenseman, the big Russian defenseman. I forget his name. He signed him to, I think it was a three-year entry-level deal. Okay. And But he was too old to sign to a three-year entry-level deal. It was against the rules. You can only do a two-year entry-level deal. So the NHL had to send an email league-wide. By the way, <laughs> here are the rules. <laughs> right. There was a team. Didn't the Calgary Flames offer sheet Ryan O'Reilly? Yes. Yeah. And even if they had gotten him, he would have had to go through waivers mm -hmm. for some reason. I don't some, remember how that worked. Yeah, I don't remember how it worked. I think they that could have potentially going. given up a king's ransom and then lost him for free. Lost him for nothing. By the way, friend, here are the rules.